We've all seen it, those images or film clips where you're not quite sure maybe how they got this effect, this effect, <coughs> this effect, or maybe this effect, but it looks totally awesome and you really want to try and recreate it in your own work. Well then, you, my friend, are in luck. Because in today's video, I am showing you a bunch of DIY filters that I use all the time that will cost you nada, depending on what kind of junk you have laying around your house. First up, let's start with glass filters. I have seen a lot of these glass prism filters all over the place, and they're coming in pretty pricey at around 20 bucks, starting at 20 bucks for one filter. But you can easily make your own by breaking the glass at home or buying a cheapo glass from a thrift store and chucking it out the window. Yes, I did make this glass filter by covering it up and throwing it out the window. I do more so recommend putting a glass into a plastic bag and breaking it with a hammer, but I was feeling a little risky. Just be careful if you do decide to make this filter out of broken glass, it can be sharp and have edges that can easily cut you. I haven't done this to this one yet because I just made it, but I usually put a bit of duct tape around the edges just to stop me from getting sliced open like a pepperoni hot pocket straight out the oven. If you are not totally into breaking your hard-earned cups that you worked so hard to pay for, I don't blame you as I usually don't recommend breaking things for no reason at all. And this filter is probably way more up your alley and that is to just shoot through a regular non-broken cup. And you can do this by using clear cups or using colored cups, which are also semi-clear depending on how much texture they may have in the cup. This is a great way to still get the glass blur effect. You just won't have as much versatility as when you use these little pieces because the bigger unbroken glass tends to be a bit more big, bulky, and awkward but it's still a great alternative. Also, make sure you give it a go with the colored glass rather than just clear because it does give you that little flare of color. Next, can you guess, we have our CD rainbow filter. This is a super awesome filter and it's just a CD and your light on your camera phone. I absolutely love this filter because it is so easy to do. You just go over to your TV cabinet that you probably haven't been in in years, you slide out that old DVD of the Titanic and you kiss it goodbye, kiss it goodbye. Because now it is your photo filter. Just tell your mom she can watch it on Amazon Prime. So to do this, you just go ahead and turn on that smartphone light of yours. You reflect the light off the disc onto whatever it is that you want to shoot. And voila, rainbow lighting. I also must mention that this does take a little bit of skill because you kind of have to hold your phone and the disc or um, hold your camera. <laughs> See, I can't even I can't even talk while I'm doing it. You have to do this, balance it, and also hold your camera at the same time. Also, I want to mention that if you're not getting the effect when you're trying this, it's probably because you have too much ambient light in your surroundings. This will make the effect just not work. It overpowers the small light from your phone and you don't get the rainbow effect. So this is definitely much better done in low light situations or when you're doing night shooting. If you're looking to do something like this, it's also super easy. You just hold the disc in front of your camera with the hole in the middle of the lens and you sort of just wobble wiggle the disc around in front of the lens. You keep it about a couple inches away from the actual lens. Moving on to fabric filters. This filter can go so many ways as far as texture and in so many different colors. You can choose to use nylon, stockings, wool, tool, etc, 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 etc. And you can basically get any color fabric that you can dream of. For mine, I am using this piece of like tulle netting that I think I tore off one of those hats that's like this. Mine is purple, so the effect that you will see will also be this sort of purpley color. There's also different ways that you can use the fabric. You can sort of wrap it around the edges of your lens like so. 
you can cover the whole lens completely like so you can double it up so that you have twice the effect and then cover your lens like so but i definitely recommend using a rubber band to secure it on your lens because it's just going to be difficult to kind of hold it here while you're holding your camera so definitely invest in some of these little rubber bands and you can just place it over your lens like this and just make sure that it's taunt against the lens so that you don't have a bunch of space between your camera lens and the actual fabric itself because otherwise that's going to make your focusing very difficult to do. And from there I kind of just like playing around. It definitely gives you this sort of vintagey, blurry, um, kind of cool effect, especially depending on the color that you choose to. Now we have our cutout shapes. This is a super, super, super Tumblr early kind of cool Instagram filter bouquet, 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 bouquet effect, where basically it's going to change the lights in the background that you blur out to whatever shape you cut in your paper plate. So here I have cut a star shape. You can kind of see if I can focus it. Bop, 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 bop. Yep, so I've cut a star shape in this paper plate and a heart in this paper plate. And this is what it looks like. But in reality, this is a super fun filter. If you're shooting at night, you can lower your f-stop, blur out your background, and make the lights in the background any shape that you really want. Next, I'm gonna talk about mirror filters. And I actually learned this trip from our tour guide in Bali, who took some really awesome photos of us using this little trick, which I will show you now. To achieve this effect, you basically just use a small handheld mirror or a reflective surface that can be a phone that is turned off. Um, the reflective surface of the glass on the phone will also do this same thing. Or going back to our CD, we can also use the CD for more of a reflective also rainbow effect. You've seen those pictures where you see the mountain and the reflection of a lake. Sometimes, I guess maybe most of the time, it is a lake, but if you want to achieve this effect without having the lake, you can use the glass at the bottom of your lens. And this will reflect your mountain or your tree or whatever it is you're trying to reflect, just like a lake would in actual life. Next, we have your three-way plastic bag filters. This one is a super versatile filter that I think a lot of people only think that you can use one way. But I'm going to show you three ways you can use one of these plastic bags and get very drastically different effects. The first thing you should know is that there are different types of plastic bags. There are some that are a bit more opaque and there are some that are completely see-through. You can see the difference here. This one you can't really totally see through, very much more blurry. This one is just a completely clear plastic bag. Now, a lot of people think that you can use this one way and that is to cut a hole through the center of the bag and then you place it over your lens like so. And it creates, depending on how you move it around, this type of fuzzy edge filter. It also creates a lot of noise. But you can see the filter there. It's got a hole and the hole has just been placed over the middle of the lens. And you can see that the effect just kind of blurs out the edges. I think that's the most common way to use the plastic bag filter. 
Another way, however, is to not cut a hole in the plastic bag. I use a clear bag for this one because the opaque version is just too hard to see through and your camera won't be able to focus. But if you decide not to cut a hole up in the plastic bag, you'll get more of a vintage vibe sort of effect. I use this a lot in my fashion and beauty photography and people are always asking how I get that hazy, starry, blurry effect. Well, this is how. And there you have it folks, you simply just secure the plastic bag tightly over the lens and use a rubber band to make it secure. Placing the plastic bag over the lens completely does make it a little bit more difficult to use your autofocus, so you may have to set manual focus. The third way is what I like to call the stained glass effect, and this is a really fun effect. It's where you use a sharpie marker to color over the end of the plastic bag. You can see I've used the Sharpie marker here and colored in two dots. I left a bit of space in between them because I don't want the whole lens to be covered up in red. I only want the effect to be on certain areas. And if you place this over your lens, tightly against the end of your lens, and move it around, you will see this effect. Depending on how tight you place it against your lens, you're going to get different effects. This is sort of loosely placed against the lens, and this is a bit of a tighter hold against the lens. And voila! Stained glass effect. One thing to remember again is just that you probably won't be able to use your autofocus, so you're going to have to shoot manual focus. Otherwise, you're going to get that effect where your autofocus is in and out and in and out and in and out, trying to focus on something but getting confused because of the plastic bag. Shh because now I'm going to show you what I believe to be the best kept secret in the land of DIY filters. And that is the DIY star filter. Question after question after question I get about how I make these stars in my images. And oftentimes I am using the Tiffin star filter that I own, but a lot of the time I have made the star filter myself. And I am gonna show you how. First step is you take your unused lens hood because whoever actually uses these things anyway. Maybe you do, I have never. Then you take fishing line. I used 2.5 fishing line. Actually, this is like really hard to read. I don't actually know what size this is, but it does say 2.5 here. I will hold it up to the camera for you guys so you can see it yourselves. So I think that this is 2.5 thickness of fishing line? I don't know. I don't really fish, so. Anyway, you take the fishing line and you cut some little strips of it, and I use the lens hood, so I basically just put them over the lens hood and taped them down on the sides so that they stay. And you want to make sure it's quite taut so that you are not having a lot of space. You guys can see how I've just taped the fishing line across the top of the lens hood. And then I have secured it along the sides with tape. And you can just cut off the extra bits that hang down on the sides here so that they don't get in front of your lens as well. And here you can see the filter. This I only taped two pieces across, so it's like an X, and this will create a four point faceted star. Now, if you wanted to create a six point star, you would simply just add another line. Eight, add another line, add another, add another. You can also take away one so that you only have one piece of fishing line all the way across, and this just creates this sort of long strobe effect. You just put this in front of your lens and you can even slide it around, moving the star if you're taking video or changing the position of the points if you're taking a photo. And ta-da, you have stars for days. Just remember, if you want a more multifaceted star, you have to add more lines. Now, my friends, we are going to talk about starry, dreamy jewelry filters. But before you go looting around in your Mima's jewelry box, I wanna let you know exactly what it is that you're 
looking for. You can't really get the same effect with all jewelry, even if it's really shiny. What you need is something with a glass or a plastic that you can see through. This is going to really reflect the light into the camera lens and give you those sort of bright shiny pops so that you get the most out of this filter. For this, I use this awesome little costume jewelry piece that I had laying around. Shooting through jewelry can be very similar to shooting through a glass or a cup but the cuts of jewelry actually have multifaceted layers. So when you look through it, the light really reflects off the cuts of the jewelry. So the more sort of angles and dynamic pieces that your jewelry that you choose has, the more sort of light reflection shiny bits you're gonna get. Playing with lights is an amazing way to get a super dynamic shot, and there are so many variations you can use, from twinkly lights to disco lights and neon lights. For this example, I am using a battery-powered neon light that I just had sitting around because I just had it sitting around. Not only can this add a pop of color to your frame, but also to whatever subject you are shooting. These neon lights are super easy to hold because usually they don't plug in, they're battery operated, you have no cord, and they come on a stick usually that you can hold or use as it's also colored. And they're super lightweight. I mean, they literally weigh nothing. I can probably hold it on one finger. Maybe not one finger, but you get it. They also come in just about every possible color and shape you can think of from pineapples to dolphins to palm trees to hearts, etc, etc, etc. They're just a really great way to get color and sort of a lens flare type effect in your work. I also really want to mention that they work super well if you're shooting in dark lit situations or at night. So that is it for today, guys. I want to know, what do you think? Do you think these filters are totally whack or totally rad? Leave a comment below to drop your thoughts, and let me know what filters you guys use, as I'm always looking for new filters, either DIY or not. Also, one thing I just want to say after making this whole filter video is that sometimes these filters get way overused, and you don't have to be like everybody else, shooting with the filters to create the effect. Sometimes less is more with filters, or sometimes more is more and filters are awesome, and I want to see what you guys create using them. And if you can figure out how to use them in different ways that maybe aren't so ordinary. Lastly, please don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Gabrielle Reddick. And please like and subscribe for more filmmaking and photography tip videos by me. I do post a new video every week, sometimes twice a week. Let me know if there's any specific questions you guys have or videos you would like to see. But for now, I will leave you with this super cute picture of my super cute dog that I took using one of these filters. If you guys can guess which filter I used, please pop a comment below. I want to know if you guys can tell. Peace!